So like I said in the video where I covered um, settings or configurations and why they are the root of all evil, basically, why, why they uh, can cause complexity to spiral out of control, I did say that there was a, a tool uh, I had available to me that helped me tackle this because all of this was unfortunately justified. Um, most of the time, most of the time, various settings and th stuff are added because somebody can't figure out a sane default. A team can't agree on how something should work. And those types of settings are things that absolutely should be avoided. Do your research. It'll actually wind up saving you quite a bit of money because that research is going to cost way less than maintaining the additional complexity. But there are inevitably real cases of uh, extreme complexity. And you need tools to deal with that. So what I've added to this is not the full thing that I've done, but it is enough to demonstrate uh, my, my approach to this. This will not apply unilaterally to every single situation where you have tons of different settings. It's just what worked in my specific case. So I had an original implementation that was not very good uh, and then after it spiraled out of control into, I believe it was 16 settings at that point, we added three more later that were much easier to add, but, um, you know, a severe level of complexity, and I'm like, all right, I need to refactor this. I need to rewrite a huge portion of, of this work I did, which is not something to be feared, guys. It's not actually that bad, and it saved me quite a bit of headaches in the long run. So looking at this, the different settings, or I, I called them flags in my implementation, but it essentially, um, what I realized is these things decided the state of the menu. And the menu was essentially a record, just as a record that what was in it shifted around. Now, in many languages, there isn't a concept of a variant record. So, how can we do this? Well, in many languages, especially when you get to the more functional side of things, they don't really have structures. They tend to do everything through tuples and lists. I can make a list of menu items and then just use some control logic to decide what actually goes in and what doesn't. The flags, the settings, decide state, and we have what is conceptually a variant record. So it's sort of this com at least, and this is what I really mean by uh, specific solutions to specific problems. This is not something that's going to work for, say, you're trying to model an oven. This would be a terrible approach to that. You don't need any type of variant uh, record concept with that at all. And this, as it turns out, this solution actually worked better than a pure variant record would. Like, I'm not sure if any other lang of any other languages that have it, but the variant record as it exists in Ida would not be actually be good for this. But it's this obviously isn't such a st simple state machine as that you can use a dictionary list because or an associative array because uh, you have quite a bit of interaction between these settings um, in some cases they turn something off for just a period of time and then it needs to revert back to where it was in the first place some people might think, oh, well, you can use a monad for that and then look up, uh, go back to the previous monad, which works assuming nothing else was changed. So there's quite a bit of interaction between these. More or less how this works, you have a menu item like you would expect with the price and the name. Uh, these were just so that I could print the stuff out 
the, the entire menu out pretty easily. But then I've implemented it just as a list along with some control logic. Now, this is essentially a combination of token driven and event driven. The build procedure, or I forget exactly how that worked in JavaScript. I haven't looked at my stuff recently, but it's essentially an event. See, I, I, this isn't a um, any type of concurrent process going on. So it's not like an actual. Um, it's not like an actual uh, event or rendezvous would need to be uh, sent off. Uh, it just needs to be told when to rebuild, and this was sort of an optimization because uh, in a token-driven uh, state machine, every single time a new setting was set to, sent to it, it would change its state. It would rebuild the entire thing based on um, whatever, because this is the, the state for this thing is the actual variant record. Uh, it would rebuild it for every single setting change. That's not the most efficient when you're sending off multiple uh, multiple um, setting changes at once. So this is why it's sort of a, a combination of the two. The, the the setting, multiple settings can be uh, changed in, at once and then told to rebuild all at once so that only one rebuild is occurring. The variant record only changes once as opposed to numerous times. Um, some of the more uh, familiar with some advanced concepts might be wondering why I didn't put these conditions within the menu item itself because that would also be another way of doing things and it had to do with an op uh, essentially what I'm talking about is where each menu item holds the condition on whether it's publicly visible or not uh, the reason why I didn't go with that approach was essentially another optimization when you have to look at your use case and uh, in this type of situation and see whether or not you're changing it a lot or reading from it a lot. And in my case, I was reading from it a lot. So not having to call uh, one of those checks every single time you read something just to see if it's visible or not cuts back on the amount of work extensively. Because if we read through the resulting menu after it, a build has been called, there are no conditions at all. It's just, read this thing, doesn't match. Read this thing, doesn't match. If the conditions exist within the menu item, then what we have to do is read this thing. Is it publicly visible? Doesn't match. Go to the next thing. Is it publicly visible? Doesn't match. So because it wasn't being rebuilt a huge number of times, but it was being read from, matched against, over and over and over again several times a minute it was far more important to optimize for that. I'm going to show this off a little bit um, just to show how this basic absolute basic uh, example works. This you see no condition in so this will always be in what is essentially the the, the variant record output of the machine. This will always show up, but will show up in a different form based on various settings. Essentially, we have the full-blown item 2. Item 2 with limitations, essentially saying that option 1 is somehow a more limited form of option 2. And, to say setting 10 is the addition of something else to certain items, because that's off in this last case, then it would be I'll have the disclaimer um, without something entirely instead of just with the limitation. Now, if we build this and run it immediately, because none of these have ever been set, the only thing that should show up is this item, item one.
and it does. So now if we set, what was that, setting 6? If we set setting 6 to option 1, and this would normally be done by like a, a, a launch page and um, some commands that can be run while the thing's operating, but this is doing this for now because I don't need to write a whole other command parser just to show this off. And you can see there's the second item. And it's correctly without something because option 10 was off, essentially. It wasn't set, but um, Ida still tends to pick sane defaults, and in the case of an enumeration, it's going to be the first one, which of course is off. We change this to on. You can see it now says with the limitation, which is correct because this was only option one. We set this to option three, which was above the option two that we had set. It should still be there, but now without the limitation at all. And it is. Now, um, yes, one thing left to do is if we set this to off, because at least in the builder that we had set, option, uh, option, or setting 10 had nothing to do with uh, an actual value in and of itself. It was just modifying these. So now we should see only the first item. And we do. So to reiterate, I had a bunch of settings that interacted. It, I could not implement a one-to-one -one mapping between any specific setting or any specific input and the resultant state. There was a group of settings that def defined the state. Because of this, the state machine could not be implemented using a um, using a dictionary list, uh, an associative array, a, a map, whatever they're called in the language you work with. In my case, the state machine has a slight optimization by which it accepts a list of tokens that needs to be changed. And then a build event. This allows changing multiple uh, states at, at, or changing multiple settings at the same time, then telling the machine to change state based on the setting changes, as opposed to changing every single time the, the token is uh, sent off. This is because the individual changes don't matter. Uh, Sort of like a, a queue for a ride. You're not sending one person off, sending the uh, ride off. Sending one person on the ride, sending the ride off. You take a whole group as much as you can, and then send it off. Just a slight efficiency thing. It doesn't really change how it works in any uh, serious way. Just, just a slight efficiency thing. But then... The result of this state machine is a sort of variant record. Sort of, as I was able to roughly implement it in um, in JavaScript, because this was in JavaScript. As far as I know, JavaScript doesn't have any concept of discriminants, so the state machine was acting as the discriminant. Maybe some of the... the more advanced JavaScript programmers out there could point out a... I'm sure I'll get plenty of more JavaScript ways to implement this that I see how those work out, but there may be a better way to do this in JavaScript. This is just where I was coming from. Um, 
this did work phenomenally well, uh, other than a few typos, uh, you, you know, using the wrong sign somewhere or using the wrong actual value somewhere or forgetting uh, an additional setting that should have been uh, part of the condition. Uh, that was the extent of the bugs in this. You know, you have an insane amount of um, different things that would need to be unit tested and... This thing has been used uh, several times a week uh, by this individual without any bugs now for like six months. W without any bugs within this, there's other there's other parts of what I've written for that individual, but um, no bugs within this. For that individual, which is quite impressive given the massive amount of complexity involved. But you can see the approach to dealing with this broke it down into very, very simple terms. I'm not sure how much this specific example will help you point out when you'd want to use a state machine versus when not. Uh, it's sort of a hard thing. Uh, I find it best when you just kind of understand the tool and then you can kind of think to yourself, hey, this might be a good place to do that, and then you can learn from whether or not that worked out or not. I don't really have any good guideline for that. Uh, there are definitely situations in which state machines add too much complexity, but there are definitely situations where it saves your ass, as it certainly did here. Um, oh, like I mentioned, when I first did this, there was roughly 16 settings, and we added three more later. Uh, we've added numerous menu items. I, I don't remember how much were there when I started, but uh, adding any of these was literally something that would take about two to five minutes and wouldn't even need to be tested, would just send off and would work. Again, no no bugs within this for like six months. Anything that was... A problem with it was literally just a typo that, like, oh, I hit the wrong key. That was it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have, consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you like what I do in general, please consider subscribing. Maybe hit that little notification bell. Um, subscribing helps me out quite a bit, and it's not super obvious because YouTube doesn't really explain anything to people. Have a good one.